get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It, Restoration. All right. Well, oh my God. Hi, Lonnie. Yeah. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. You've been a stranger. You've been I have. Too quiet. Yeah, I have. It's been crazy. How long has it been? It's been like three months, four months? Something like that. I think the last time we recorded was, um, actually, I can tell you it was uh, April 24th because it was my 20 anniversary. 21st wedding anniversary. Yeah. And then you only release it took three months to release it so happy new year's or merry christmas to all the you it's so awful. We have. yeah it's uh you know you you, you you take what's inherently um my uh challenges with scheduling and other things and then you just just throw in a pandemic it'll it'll smoothen things out <laughs> Right. Well, you're working from home, so life is easy and perfect. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perfect. What's perfect? So how you been? Looks like I saw you went and saw a bunch of big trees or something recently. Oh yeah. Yeah. Been. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, been good. Um, because everyone's at home, we've been enjoying each other's company, and then when we start to feel like you know we need a change of scenery, then we'll do something like visit a place with big trees go at, yeah go <laughs> see big trees yeah that was fun it was the uh calaveras big trees i guess maybe a state park or a national park i don't know some park with you know rangers and things some place they probably don't want open campfires no, actually, it was kind of cool because we bought the we brought the bikes and we just rode our bikes not on the trails but the the paved sections and that basically took us around where folks were camping and it was like wow this is what this is what it feels and looks and smells like and what how people are situated um, with all of their gear and things so it was really nice totally not my style cool. but I could totally get into it you know. Well, did you camp? No, it was it was a day trip, so we spent like the two some hours oh. dri- driving up up uh, up the mountain or wherever the hell, hell it was, and then um, you know did the the short bike ride around the uh, the camp area, then secured the bikes back on the rack, and then we actually walked the the trail and got to see a whole bunch of uh, trees. <laughs> Certain ones were numbered. Yeah, certain ones were numbered. You know, they were like points of interest, and some of them had nicknames. Um, you know, and there were some plaques that gave a little bit of history. You know, just stuff well, that's like been Lewis there and Clark that. took a leak on it or something. Exactly. Yogi Bear here scratched his ass, and which is why the, the tree fell. Um, oh. Going so on the you. trees fall in the woods and nobody hears it. Does it make a noise? <laughs> Did you ask that? You yeah, know, I, somebody has no. to ask that a hundred times a day. No, I mean because even, because even even that we even though we were out in the park, there was still a good you know mindset of keeping distance and stuff. But that didn't keep the young crowd because there was a young crowd. They were just hollering through the woods you know like one idiot would holler out and then expect somebody else to holler back um nothing meaningful like just playing marco polo in the in the woods yeah but i don't even think they even knew each other they were just you know putting out getting getting out some energy you know in a space where they could actually let it all out yeah gotcha and and that's that's what's been going on here. How about you? You you've uh, since moved into uh, a, new, a new place, new home, right? Yep, yep, yep. We're finishing out our basement. We got drywall coming next week, so I got to do some electrical work this weekend and we'll move move some light switches around and and uh, yeah, get it prepped and for the drywallers. I have to finish insulating the 
the basement. That's about the only good thing I I learned from living at my in-laws' house is um, I did not want to hear clickety clack and stomp stomp stomp. So so I insulated my floors so I don't have to hear that. Wow, that sounds cool. Yeah. So you you, so you yeah, get we'll the home five bedrooms here pretty soon. So you get the home built out to a certain point, and then you decide, you know what, don't worry about doing these things because I'm going to do it, or, or, or is it you're doing work on top of work? Well, I, uh, I bought a spec house, and um, which basically means a builder is just, I mean, I'm in a brand new subdivision. Google Maps doesn't even know where I'm at. And, um, yeah, so... We, we walked in and saw it when it was just the sticks and kind of liked the layout and, and stuff and uh, decided to proceed forward. And, and all he was going to do is finish out the main level in the garage. And for a price, he would finish out the basement. But, you know, I'm like, no, I know how the contracting world works. I'll save the middleman and just hire the same drywaller and the same electrician that, you know, hire my plumber, my electrician, my, my drywall guy, and they'll give it to me for a fair price. They'll make a living, but I'm not paying a middleman to handle my money, basically. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool being able to have all of that, you know, that, that knowledge and connection and stuff and work it out. Yeah. Which reminds me, I need to call my plumber because I've had, like, my third water leak in my brand-new house. We've lived there a month, and I've had three water issues. Oh no! Nothing too serious. I hope. Yeah, we moved in on a Saturday, and me and an employee went in on on a Monday to. I was showing him something in my storage area, and and uh, I noticed a bunch of water on the ground. So I had my wife call the uh, the builder and and say, "Hey, the solder joints on the expansion tank is dripping." He goes, "Oh, have you have I ever told you I don't like general contractors by and large?" Oh, well, here's a perfect example why. Yeah. So my, my wife says the expan- or the the solder joints on the expansion tank is leaking, and his reply was, "Oh, I'll send the plumber out tomorrow. It, it's probably just the pop off valve." I'm like, "Dude, ninety nine percent of the people don't even know what an expansion tank is, and we're using the terminology correctly, and then you're you're going to assume that we don't know what we're talking about." Oh, I don't. That oh, I don't like. I don't like builders, but because of that example right there. Ugh, God, that's annoying. Yeah, I got drying equipment in my basement again. I need to call my plumber. Um, my water softener, I guess when it discharges or something, must be leaking. So, no big deal. <laughs> don't mess with Lonnie. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. So, uh, yeah, this is so. This is basically like catch up episode, and I'm hoping that you know, you know, we could just get 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 back things uh, to, to some level of normal as far as podcasting. Um, we did. We I did notice that that bit of feedback from somebody who messaged. Uh, yeah, Melody. Yeah. Hi, Melody. Yeah. Hi, Melody. Yeah, so it, it's you, it's nice to, it's nice you, to get you, what. How you doing? How you doing, Melody? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't even know Melody. <laughs> I, I recognize her name. That's it. Well, it, it what was it? She says, uh, "How many listeners do we have? Like three or four, But <laughs> she's one of nope. them. So yeah, she's one of them. It's awesome. Yes, it is. So I don't have. What's anything- shaking with you? I don't have anything uh, sort of, I don't have any questions. I have nothing. Um, it's, it's just you been have that. Nothing? Yeah, I have nothing. Uh, well, you and I haven't even hardly talked at all. Yeah. For the last I know. three months. Oh, I, actually, um, I had a, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if this was ever talked about, but um, we had a big rain a, a few months back and then it brought water into the home. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, by, Keep by, talking. by the entrance, right? Um, 
it was, it, it was a big rain. And then, and, um, I forget what I was doing, but then I noticed there was water on the carpet right where, so when you, when you come into the house, there's a little bit of tile once you, once you come through the door and then you get carpet in the front room. So that, so right where mm-hmm. the carpet begins, it felt a little wet. So then I followed the wetness and led towards the wall and I could feel more moisture Uh-oh. there right below the baseboards <laughs> up to a certain point. I'm like, huh, okay. It's coming from inside the wall somehow and it's coming from the top most likely. And in the past, you know, we've had a roof guy come over and patch up some, some loose stuff that had caused some discolorations on parts of the wall. And that had that. So I, I was thinking something similar was happening. Um, but the water was coming in somewhere else. So, you know, um, roof guy came in and he saw how, how some loose flashing, this or that, or the other thing, and, and some problems with, with bird poop. <laughs> and, and from, oh, from wow. what I remember, the way he described it, as the water sort of sloped down, you know, and it came down the, the angle of the roof, then it, it, would, it would hit this cluster of matter. I don't know if it's part of the roofing or a combination of the roofing and the, and the bird mass and nesting and stuff. Then it sort of it, it brought, it pulled the water to a point that it slipped over this what is it called flashing is that the right terminology how the vertical yeah portion there is of, flashing yeah it, it then it would go into that flashing and then it would that's likely where the water was getting into the walls so you know it was a freak it was a freak rain and um we you know summer's hit um i i did my best to dry it out suck up the moisture and and keep a fan on it and keep air flowing uh and it dried up um so sometime next month you're gonna have uh that worked on um mm. yeah yeah <laughs> gotcha so why didn't you turn that into insurance and just get it done right uh yeah we can talk about it offline <laughs> i don't want to talk about it okay <laughs> yeah. okay but you know it, it's it's neat again like every time something like water related happens i'm always thinking like okay well with lonnie what what, what was what, what did lonnie have any tips for me here that i just have to remember <laughs> so it's- you should you could have called me i would have overnighted you an infrared camera and you can light up your own wall and see what <laughs> see what it looks like uh, yeah so i'm making my way back into the home i had I was, I was out and about getting stuff for the kids from the dental office So in the dental office, are they are are your dentists seeing the kids yet? Yeah, they have been. Um, they have been. Remember that episode we had with uh, with with Megan, and she talked about Megan? how yeah yeah how you know it's going to be you know don't avoid the dental office. It's going to be the most cleanest places you can be because they you know that's basically how they roll, right? So now they're just when you walk in, they've been taking extra precautions. Things like, um, you know, a lot of places have the, the uh, what is it, the, um, the clear plastic shields in front of their, their counters and stuff to minimize, right. you know, particles and whatever. Um, you know, hand sanitizer everywhere. And so that, you know, additional measures like that and asking folks to keep their, their, their space. How has it been, actually, how has it been in your neck of the woods, Um I know that. With COVID? Time, yeah, because I know the last time we chatted, you know, things are kind of like normal, <laughs> normal, normal, you know, or a mixed bag of people. Uh, well, you know. it's, we're pretty much business as usual. We have, um, nice. Uh, you know, some stores like Walmart and Sam's, they make you wear a mask and, um, and I don't understand all this. I mean, it, it's not a state or city mandate, so I don't know how a store can mandate it. But I mean, it, but by and large, I mean, you go to any restaurant right now, and they're business as usual, seating anybody and everybody. Uh, some restaurants are making their staff wear masks. Like my daughter works at a neighborhood uh, pizza joint; she has to wear a mask, um, but none of the patrons are. Yeah, it's hard to eat pizza. So, with that. <laughs> right, right. 
So I, yeah, I mean, we're pretty much, um, we're pretty much business as usual. But I hear your state is really messed up and just really locking everything down. I guess. I mean, I, I think I, it depends on where in the state, you know, um, like where I'm at, it, it, the norm is social distance, wear a mask, you know, no one's getting shot or killed or arrested because they aren't wearing it. And, you know, you do get that sense of kind of looking at people with a weird eye, like, why are all you guys grouped together? especially like the teenagers, right? Why are you guys all grouped together and nobody's wearing a mask? Maybe one of you guys wearing a mask. Or maybe that one kid has, a, has asthma. That's why he's wearing a mask. Everybody else doesn't care. Um, so that's sort of like my area. But then when we've taken long drives out to other parts of the state, you know, you know it's, it's a totally different vibe. They're, they're like, uh, eh, you know, we, it, we're not worried about it. <laughs> at all so like and we're the ones we were the freaks because we're we're the ones wearing the masks because that's how we we operated it in our in our neighborhood um you know like we go we we went to southern cal we stayed at an airbnb right we just needed a change of scenery and it was by a lake and you know it's it's really out there and it's out in the mountains so i'm feeling like well you know maybe because it's kind of secluded out here um, it's less of a concern. Like, that's cool. Um, we're still going to wear our masks, even though we look like idiots, but um, just in case. Um, then only to get back home and everybody's, like, masked up. <laughs> when you're hiring someone to clean your carpet, you're probably assuming that they're using better equipment and better cleaning solutions than you would. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Their equipment should heat the water to 200 degrees to ensure that your carpets are not only clean, but disinfected. Next time you hire someone to clean your carpet or tile, ask them how hot their water gets. If they don't know or it's less than 200 degrees, send them back and call me, Lonnie Beecham, with Restore It Restoration. I'll get your carpets done right and your life back to normal. Yeah, see around here, we, I don't know, you see the odd person driving around with a mask on by themselves, it's like, you're by yourself, but then again, you never know if they're on their way to pick up 90 year old grandma. And you know, it, it, it is kind of odd when you see them wearing a mask by themselves. The one that really makes me scratch my head are the people that are outdoors walking on a walking trail, nobody around. If there is, there's plenty of room to pass let them go by. And they're out running with the mask on or, or they're walking with the mask. It's like, what are you? That I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. People out. I mean, yeah, out when you're out mic, exercising and walking. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, the virus just doesn't come and attack you outside mm, if nobody's just, around. Did I lose you? No. Okay. I was listening. Uh, yeah. Uh, so how's um, work going? Are you all trained up on your new role? Now works. Work's been crazy. Yeah. It's been crazy. Yeah, I've been. You know, I've. Uh, I feel like I've uh, kind of gotten accustomed to the role. Um, every project's different, so then just there's a little a little bit of adjustment. But the cool thing, the very cool thing is, and I've, I, I've expressed this to folks in the organization, in the team, in the company, where it's like, you know, from day one, I've needed a flexible work schedule because, you know, I've got kids with appointments. I've got various kids with different appointments. So everything, you, you throw that in on top of school and it's like, I, I, I need or to be lack thereof. Yeah, I, I need to take care of. I need to be able to take care of home stuff and I need to be able to take care of work stuff. So I need some flexibility because if I do, if, if I don't have it, then something's going to fall. And so even, and even though I've been given the thumbs up as far as flexibility, you know, I couldn't help but think like guilty or whatever, right? It's like, Oh man, I'm not committing as much time as everybody else. There's going to be somebody on the team who's wondering, 
why isn't Ruel where he's supposed to be like I am? Or, you know, why isn't he on a regular schedule like I am? So now, right. now everybody's sort of thrown into this whole be remote. You know, our organization, you know, we, we have that capability. Um, a good percentage of the, of the company was remote anyways. Um, they were hired as fully remote staff. Um, so now it just got switched on 100% remote for everybody. And now people are struggling, right? Because um, they've got kids at home. They're working from home. They're starting to feel all of this guilt and, and edge, what do you call it? Uh, you know, this, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like um, I'm not spending as much time at, on for work as I should, I'm failing, or I'm my 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 preschooler's at home with me, and and he or she wants to to color or play, but I can't because I want to spend time I have to spend time working, but I'm I'm neglecting my child, so I'm being a bad parent, you know, I'm not right, supporting right. my child's development where ordinarily they'd be in school and getting all of this contact and and uh, tactile and 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 motor and all of these developmental things, right? So everyone's going through it everyone's going through the, the craziness and i told i told the uh, you know people that matter in the in the company like in a weird way and kind of selfish way i feel i feel glad that everybody's going through this 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 time because now they now now i don't feel like i'm the only one that's going through it and now folks can understand you know, if they choose to if they choose to open their eyes to it like there are people who this is regardless of a pandemic, this is how they have to live, you know, and this is the challenges they go through. So, so yeah, I, you know, had that basically transparent conversation with, with uh, basically the, the head of, um, you know, with members of uh, the, what, basically the human resources organization, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because they want to get a handle on how people are doing, how parents are doing. And and um, make sure that um, everybody's uh, is supported, you know, because they, they understand that, you know, they don't want there's, they don't want folks to be having to choose from choose work, you know, choose to not to work because of families. They want to make it possible for folks to be able to do their job, uh, and 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 um, amidst this really difficult time. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how people do it with small kids. I'm fortunate <sighs> that I can't work from home. Yeah, we're, you know, it, the way I described it was like, I know I'm going to have to be working through, the, through, you know, I have to work. But I, but what's also in the back of my, my mind is the fear that I may have to be in three different classrooms, you know, in the day on top of having to do my things for work. So... Only time will tell. Hopefully, the older kid can sort of self-navigate and figure things out, get accustomed, you know, and then they'll be one. I know I'm pretty worried about our this generation of kids in school that are some are just all online only, and it's like I don't know that nine-year-olds are capable of clocking in at ten fifty for their English class, and you know what I'm yeah. saying? And oh yeah. It, and what, the, what do you do when you got the mom and dad work outside the home? They have jobs that they can't work from home. They they work factories or whatever they do. Yeah, and they, got these they may be e they may be essential workers. Yeah, yeah, and they got these e kids that are too young to really be left by themselves, and they're yet you know they got to set alarms and like know that they got to tune into you know so and so's class at at nine fifteen and eight you know. I, I don't, I don't, it'll be, I can't personally wait to read about this in the future to see what <laughs> we did right, what we did wrong, you yeah. know, what, you know, well, uh, I, uh, I heard somebody talking uh, today that, you know, since, since all this COVID, um, like they're having cardiology appointments via Zoom, but they're not doing the you know, the stress tests and, you know, what are, you know, hooking up to all the monitors and, and they're not listening to the hearts. And it's like somebody was saying, yeah, I see, you know, they kind of predicted seeing a, uh, 
it's a increase in mortality from people just freaking out and not, you know, having offices open or too scared to see people. They're not catching diseases early that could have been, you know, caught and treated and prevented. Mm -hmm. it, it, it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out in the future. Yeah, I, I, I wondered the same thing. They're, they're like uh, real good friends of ours. They're new parents. Their child just turned one. But, you know, their child is, is going to be, you know, raised in a world the first several, you know, its first couple of years sort of in, you know. In, in fear? Uh, not in fear. Because he's, he's only going to know, like, you know, breast milk. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not even going <laughs> to recognize mom's face because it's covered with a mask. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. The, the, he's the child is living in a world where there's a lot of people wearing masks, or there isn't a whole lot of uh, going out or doing anything. Um, yeah, another friend. Yeah, I got a, a. I have a niece that's going to be six months old here pretty soon. That's that, right. Um, that's all she knows right now. I mean, she's yeah. obviously tied to mama really tight but, and they moved from new york to uh seattle seattle area. yeah 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 um I, Trey that, had, that reminds me pinged me randomly um some a photo where he was at at the time i think it was uh mount rushmore <laughs> oh he sent you that that's kind of interesting that that whole yeah i was like i was wondering because because he his it didn't pop up on my phone with a caller id you know a name like that it was trey i, I it yeah was a number. He, I'm like, he got a new he got a new phone number new york number or something yeah uh well that's so, kind of funny i found out from kurt leopard that trey was driving across north america and that amber and the baby were flying I thought, uh -huh. oh, that's kind of odd. And then, um, yeah, he told me that, and that Trey was initially looking for a place to eat and a place to sleep. And, um, yeah, yeah. And, and then I asked Kurt, so what day is Trey coming to, you know, hang out with you? He goes, oh, he's not. He's now going to Mount Rushmore. So I just think it's kind of funny that here – you're telling me he he sent you a picture of his mount or his his uh, Mount Rushmore um, trip. It was it was actually a picture of some sort of uh, memorial or placard or something that said Guam. <laughs> ah, so he thought Eight, of you. Eighteen something, and there's Guam. He's and his caption was like uh, Guam represents or something like that. I'm like I'm like okay, who's who's texting me? And I think it was still his old number at the time. I just had to like search through my my messages to see who, or or maybe scroll up on the conversation to, to see who it was. And uh, yeah, and it was Trey. That's kind of funny. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get a single I didn't get a single uh, photo or nothing of of his trip. But that's cool. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but guess what happened one year ago today. One year ago today, was it your mom got cleared? Yep, mom left Seitman Cancer Center. Uh, one year ago today, uh, the video popped up, you know, in, in, in the calendar thing. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my She's God. Been cancer free ever since. God. What a. She does a have journey. a follow up appointment next, next uh, week. Just a blood draw, though. Which reminds me, her nurse owes me ten grand. You feel bad? Did I lose you, or did you lose me? Oh no, I I hear you. I just it just got real quiet for a second. Yeah, 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 it did. Um. Yeah, so you're saying um, your mom had checked out, but she has an upcoming she has an upcoming appointment. Yeah, every three months they they check out her blood or or zap her or something to see where she's at, and this next time is just a blood draw, and then she's looking to try to get to Seattle area to meet her grandbaby. Sure. Yeah. 
Yep. So I'll be sending her out there. Oh, I don't know when. Soon. Yeah. 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 You, I know you know, we can go back several podcast episodes and then we could just hear and, and you know, how, how really tough that was for, for you and your ma and for you and your ma. <laughs> you know, it's very difficult. And my wife. And yeah, my kid. You know yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, I lived a lot of a lot of nights at her place last year. Oh my god, yeah. Yep. Yep, didn't come yeah. home for days on end. Yeah, back then we wouldn't have known that a year later you'd be able to get a, a a a reminder on Facebook about, you know, how that it's all sort of in the past and everything sort of worked out. Mhm. Wild. So, um, the, uh, God, it's been so long, you know, now, like, are you, the whole NSNG Foods thing that, you know, Vicky yep. and Andy are doing, the new thing? Yep. I mean, how, how much do you know about what's going on there? I mean, I know that I know a pro a couple products and they've done, yeah, they, they only, event. they only have two now. It's so crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't seen. I haven't had any samples sent my way yet. So I, I. I haven't tasted it yet. And then I saw online, you know, in the group that people were having troubles getting their orders or something because I guess they got over too overwhelmed. That that's about all I know. Okay. Nut butter yeah. and ultra salt together. Yeah, it's 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 funny because, um, I I'm on a I'm on a pure coffee club subscription. And, you know, it, yeah. it, it took, a, it took a long time for me to actually, you know, decide like, you know what, I should just be, I should be having some pure coffee because I'm making a lot of coffee home now. Um, right. Right. I mean, at home because I'm at home and I'm kind of getting tired of the store-bought coffee and it's not tasting, it's not, it's not, it's not helping me the way I needed to help me. So I'm like, I got to give me some of that athletic, the athletic, what do they call it? The athletic blend. Athletic blend. Yeah. Yeah. I swear, it's like the last time I had the athletic blend was when they had sent samples to to all of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just just the raw beans. So, it's it's kind of cool. I, I'm digging it. I'm digging. I'm digging the whole process of actually doing the subscription, and then receiving the product, and then having. Is the Anna gonna do a a subscription model? You know, with her marinara. I don't know. The last time I chatted with her, it was funny, man. It was so funny because it must have been when was the Kansas Kansas City meetup? The the NSNG Kansas City meetup. How long? How many years? It ago? It was September of seventeen. It was like three years ago, right? So. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I went through my whole my 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 history with chat with Anna, and back then, you know, because um, I helped out, I helped Trey do the whole. Kansas City Meetup t-shirt design. And right. at that time, I remember feeling like, you know what, I got to do something for Anna. I've been doing all this stuff for Vinny. Why don't I design something for Anna? And I designed this thing called uh, um, Awesome Sauces, right? Like Anna Vecino's like eat happy awesome sauces sort of design. And it would be on the mm -hmm. front of the shirt. It'd be the front of the shirt. And on the back, it would be like all of the sauces that were in her eat happy book, her first book. And it, it's in the same sort of letter style as her book, so, you know, and and if she's like, yeah, we'll do that for one day when my when my when my sauce line comes up, right? When I have my own sauce line. Yeah. And so I, so it's like, like was it last week? I pinged her. I'm like, I, I remember this. I sent her the photos. I said, did you did you ever think that you would become a sauceprenur when we when I was kind of like when we had this, this conversation? three years ago she's like oh my god we could use that now but um yeah i just thought it was funny you know um she's actually putting out she's actually putting out a sauce and three years ago we were just yeah. kind of like joking about it um but she the last time i talked to anna or chatted not texted with her she was like yeah she's interested in doing like a 
you know, uh, I eat happy or marinara, some sort of, some sort of, uh, maybe it's like a grocery bag of some sort, something. And, oh, uh, there you go. And uh, she's like, she could pay me to design it. <laughs> and I'm like, sure, just let me know what you want. I'm thinking like, uh, <laughs> I'm, th- I'm thinking like, if you, I mean, if you just wanted to say, you know, like eat happy marinara or something, like you already have a design. <laughs> what do you need me for? <laughs> But yeah, well, I, I mean, I might heard. as well grab a grab a pocket of money. Yeah, might as well. So funny. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I don't I don't know if he's going to be doing the subscription. Um, but the coffee stuff, if if if, if I don't, you might be you might be on it already. But I like the subscription for the coffee because oh, I've set it to like give me a bag every two weeks, right? So I'll get a delivery sent oh. to me. Then I'll, I'll go back yep. in and I'll then I'll edit the subscription and I'll get a different roast. And then I'll get that. Then I'll go and edit the sub- subscription again and get a different roast. So I'm having to try all these different things. I'm not locked down to one roast. So I'm waiting on double French <laughs> right now. Well, I'm still burning through all my Starbucks beans. I don't know how long it takes for beans to go stale, but I mean, I'm still grinding it and still drinking it from all my COVID work I did with them back in, man, May, June. Yeah. Something like that. So, so, so they basically said, haul out everything that isn't sealed or had been opened up and just haul it out, right? Yeah. Yep. If it's been opened, get rid of it. I was like, okay. And I'll dispose of it off site. By grinding it and putting it in hot water. <laughs> yes. I will recycle it one flush at a time. <laughs> Oh God, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I got thousands of cups, and yeah, I, I don't even carry a tumbler thing anymore. I just carry a, you know, whatever size Starbucks cup with a lid. Just grab it and go. <laughs> you Walk can have out your the own, door. You can have your own like coffee cart. You know, just repurpose all that stuff. Just kind of take a sharpie and cross out where it says Starbucks and put Lonnie's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah I need to get Kurt Leopard. Kurt Leopard needs to send some coffee out too. Oh, I saw. I saw. I saw. That was that's exciting. Kurt's got coffee. Yeah, he's been roasting his bean his own beans for a while. I guess he sells them in his in his in his store. I don't know. Yeah, super cool. His uh his restaurant. Yeah, on a bar. Yeah. Well, was the flying pig? Um. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Flying pig. Yep. Oh man, it is hot and humid here. Is it? Yeah, I'm sitting here in my shop with the garage door wide open. I was for a brief minute this week. I had every piece of my equipment was out on jobs and and um yeah one of my jobs i just wrapped up was a pig farmer and um while we were there the the sow had a litter of piglets and i got the whole you know an hour old piglet i never done that before that was pretty cool and then he gave me some bratwurst of his that he you know his own pig of like, mm. but they were very good and he, he ground up all the pork belly and the bacon and uh, i mean grinds it all up into into uh a bratwurst yeah and yeah. um oh man it was good it was really uh, good sounds good it was <laughs> delicious so here's little piglet and then here's a bratwurst <laughs> bite into yep. the right one that's exactly what <laughs> exactly what i was thinking yeah uh, well at least it isn't deer roadkill <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've you been doing water that. damage after a rain. So, yeah, yeah. you, you uh, I, I can't wait to hear why you didn't turn that in to insurance. Yeah, yeah. just remind me why, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> gotcha. You just don't want all three of our listeners to know. Mm-mm, no. You know, like Jackie Jones. 
Ah, uh, yeah. I haven't talked to Jackie in a long time. She got too busy after she retired. Wow. Yeah, we got to It's kind of cool having having the other folks on, you know, having the return having folks return on the show and we just kind of you know, go back and forth. Like, yeah, we need to probably start working on getting guests back on. Yeah, definitely. Instead of us just sitting here shooting the shit. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to I definitely didn't want to have anybody on, as, you know, as a guest if we're still trying to catch up and kind of get in the swing of things. But now, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I totally missed getting together. It's also it's also therapy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you need to come fly out to Missouri, and I'll pick you up from the airport. You and your family need to come just hang at our house when, once we get a couple extra bedrooms. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Ah, oh, crap. Um, we, have, we have three bedrooms now and two more coming with another family room and another bathroom. Wow. So cool. Congratulations on a new home. That's so cool. Well, thank you. It's kind of cool. Got a dirt yard. I don't have grass yet. That's coming next month. July is not a good time to plant seed and, and expect it to grow. So September and October is the best months to plant grass around here. So, yeah, so it's a challenge with having a little pup that needs to go. Well, she's an old dog, but, um, yeah, let, having a dog that needs to go out all the time and, and it's always muddy. And, and yeah, it's been a, it's been a real challenge, but, ah. Uh. And the house I bought, the the deck didn't have a set of stairs on it. And then the builder wanted, um, he wanted to charge me five grand to build stairs on my deck. I was like, no, you just pour me some concrete when you're pouring my driveway. I'll pay for that. And then me and a, me and a guy put it in last, no, last weekend. Uh, I had $1,500 in labor and material. And, um, it's like, yeah, I'll I'll save that four grand or five grand. <laughs> I'll just do it wow. myself. Yeah. I had to hire a guy basically cool. to cut stringers. I can't cut a stringer to save my life. I've never done it. I know it's tricky. It's and... just selling steps. <laughs> Pre made steps. Well, well it, <laughs> it really is. People don't people see it and they think they can put on duplicate it, but and... <laughs> But it it's a lot harder to it's a lot harder to cut steps in than people realize. So I hired that, that part out, and then, and then we cut all the boards and screwed them in and paid him some cash and went on the way. Very cool. Yeah, my, uh, my recent handiwork has been uh, installing a hitch in the back of the van. <laughs> oh, did you bolt it on yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I had to lower the muffler, just take it off of its hook or whatever the thing is, this hanger, and create a little space and uh, um, kind of insert one side of the hitch to over the muffler just below where it's supposed to be bolted. And that then uh-huh. that, sort, that sort of just sat over the muffler, you know, like it was a second pair of hands. Then I went over to the other side and, and, and prepped it there and kind of worked my way back and forth until I had it all sort of situated and tightened everything up. Saw that on a YouTube Look video. You. <laughs> there you go. I had to, I'm so, I'm so bad. I, I, I didn't have the tools, so I had to get like $60 worth of tools, <laughs> right? Did the only job. 50. No, only 60. It's just like, the, the question is, when will I ever need another one of these uh, ratchet sets again, right? Um, so it's like, um, cleaned up the tools, packaged it, packaged it back up and just returned it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, that's what Harbor Freight's good for stuff like that. When you don't think you'll ever use it much again. Yeah. They're cheap enough. They'll, they'll last you a lifetime if you don't use them every day. Yeah. I mean, you never I know. I, I mean, I, I'm like every, I'm like a lot of, you know, tool loving folks or folks who grew, grew up around tools and stuff. It's like, I'd love to be able to hold on to tools, but, but 
I want to run out of space. I'm, I'm like, I don't have, a, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm just going to feel like I've just, I'm just not using it. Someone else could make use of it, you know? Well, there, there you go. I mean, I don't, I don't, there's, I don't buy every tool I need. I rent a lot of tools because, but I know, I know when I'm going to need a, another like concrete mixer, which is like never. <laughs> so I'll rent a concrete mixer. Gotcha. Yeah, I I, uh, I put a socket set on my impact wrench or impact drill, and and uh, instead of using cranking it by hand, I just zap it with an impact, and wah, 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 it's done. <laughs> I love yeah, my that, impact. I use it every day. That's the uh, that's uh, that air air. Uh, does that need a compressor to actually? What am I thinking? What am I thinking of? How does that? Oh well, yeah, your just... well, I use battery powered ones, um, but yeah, your garage shops they they use a lot of air impacts, but I, I use battery impacts. Okay. But same same principle, but yeah, I don't I don't I do have air compressors and I have nail guns and I have Brad nailers and I have framing nailers and stuff that I operate off of air compressors, but not my not my impact screw gun. You just put a little adapter thing on it, and put the socket on it, right, 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 done. There you go. <laughs> right, right, right. You didn't watch that on YouTube. <laughs> no, you shouldn't make that video. <laughs> oh, that'd be boring. <laughs> that would be boring. Nobody would watch that. So what's going on? I mean, we only have a few minutes left, but we have, I, haven't, I haven't gotten any insight on like any new jobs and things that you wrapped up any interesting new jobs or jobs that you're working on um well just i'm drying out a few houses right now i'm putting together i just put together a pretty monster substantial mold job uh estimate and it was only sixty thousand dollars i don't know if it'll be the full sixty thousand dollar package but um you know honestly quite quite honestly i hope it, it's not the full Sixty thousand dollar package, because um, they're an hour north of me. But um, yeah, packing out everything of family owns because they want to drop their ceilings due to mold. But the real reason is it's due to asbestos, and um, I really don't want to pack out a a forty five year old house with nothing but antiques and I was mean, just packed to the gills. It's only a thousand square foot on the main level, but man, is it packed in there. Wow. About 30, 30,000 of that 60 is just to pack it up and haul it off and, and uh, bring it back. Wow. So yeah, other than that, I mean, we got, uh, we got a big rainstorm a couple Sundays ago. We got like five inches in an hour or two. So that, that brought on a lot of work and a lot of wet basements and, uh, a lot of repeat customers, you know, they just call me and I say, I'll be there as soon as I can. I'm wrapping up this, this house. And, and there's like, here's my garage door code. Let me know what I owe you. And okay. So it's pretty mundane, run of the mill, easy going, you know, pretty boring stuff. Actually, I haven't done a mold job in a while. Um, you know, it's pretty just bread and butter boring stuff did i lose you no i'm here guys Hello. it's kind of okay uh, yeah it kind of went you're on mute of, no no it kind of went on mr roboto for a while from from what i was listening to and then it cleared up <laughs> mm, gotcha yeah pretty much same old same old every day and and, uh, and 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 it's no different with uh with the whole COVID thing. No one's it doesn't. Nah, there was a hot minute where. What's that? Oh, I see business as usual. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, when it was the peak of the shutdown stuff, there was people that were wanting us to wear masks and you know stuff. But that was a a fleeting moment. Um, no big deal. I mean, it's no, I go in and out of people's houses. Nobody around here hardly even talks about it. Um, 
you wouldn't even, you know, if you didn't watch the news around here, you wouldn't even know that there was a COVID pandemic going on. <laughs> and our cases are dropping every day. Um, you know, death rate is dropping. Uh, I mean, I guess our cases are growing, going up. I don't know. I don't really follow that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Stands the reason if you test 10,000 new people last month that you're going to have a higher number of uh, of positive cases, but our death rate is, has been plummeting. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I got tested. We, we don't even, we don't even talk about it at home. That's cool. Yeah. I got tested. My wife and I got tested. We haven't heard, gotten results back yet, but we had to get testing just, just to be sure, because we had a, we had been in contact with a, with somebody who had to get tested because they were in contact with somebody. You know, that is that whole tech network marketing, right? <laughs> you tell yeah. five of your friends and then two of them will tell 10 of their friends. So it's like, great. I mean, okay, let's just figure, let's just get ourselves tested regardless of all these other folks, what happens with them. If they come back negative, then okay, we'll feel good. Okay. But my wife and I, we got swabbed or whatever stuff in our nose and we're waiting. So is that the big thing shoving into your brain or through your nose? No, I was, I was prepared to get that one, but then the ones that were available in my city were just simply basically swab the heck out of the inside of your nostrils. <laughs> okay. Um, and that was it. So it was supposed to take two weeks. Uh, I guess we'll maybe, it may be another week. We should get the results back. So see, mm-hmm. and that's where us over here in flyover, area it's like why do some how do some people get the results the same day and some people get it within five days and some people you're telling i i've never heard anybody say two weeks but man yeah. two weeks if you got it tested two weeks ago, i mean that's a long time if you're sitting there in limbo you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like what are you gonna do sit at home i mean not yeah. do nothing yeah and it's like okay so let's say the rest of the results come back negative but then the next day i get exposed and i get it <laughs> <laughs> right. Or even if they all come back negative and you come back positive, I mean, okay. I mean, th- then what? I mean, so they're negative. You got it from Starbucks or wherever you went to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I Personally, I wish there was a little bit more uniformity. I mean, not every place in, in America is New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, but not every place is Jeff City, Missouri either. So, I mean, there should be some sort of happy medium, more universal protocols placed on this. Some are locking down, some are shutting down hair salons and restaurants. And uh, my sister-in-law lives outside, you know, in Port Wainey there, there in uh, LA and like yeah. their hair salons are, are, are closed. Restaurants are closed. Can't, can't go out to eat unless they have outdoor dining. Um, well, not every restaurant has a outdoor seating facility. Uh, I mean, they're just shutting down like way too much. It's it's so it's ki- to it's what killing. end? It's killing. I mean, I, you know, like from from one friend who's been working at a restaurant as a waiter for like seven years of his life, his grown life. He's you know in a place that he loves. Now it's like that restaurant had to shut down, and so did a bunch of other restaurants in 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 uh, in his town. And it's heartbreaking because you know not not just because my friend's out of a job, but now that whole that whole history or the whole you know establishment that you know had a, a long history no longer exists. Yeah, you know, no will they happened. survive? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of that. Yeah. and then like other small businesses in my town, they're like a like a gym. You know, like they they they're having to flex and figure out other ways to get folks to do workouts outside. And do limited inside um, access, and you know we can't wait to get back and and do our workouts in that facility. But we're waiting on them actually getting the green light to be able to open up what they call their kids lounge. Because my wife and I aren't gonna, aren't you know the the draw with this particular gym is that it, there's a place we can park our kids while we spend that 45 minutes to an hour getting our workout. Right. In. And without it's like, ugh. but that, you know, the business itself is suffering because they've had to basically freeze people's accounts. 
you know, and they've had to basically dumb down their offerings and get. But yet they still have rent or mortgage or whatever, do. Yeah, like like my company, it's been it's committed for several years, you know, in a lease for this office space in the city in San Francisco. And, you know, we're going to be doing this remote thing for quite a while. Um, so what, you know, what's, you know, it's well, weird. I know? think the commercial real estate market's going to plummet big time. Cause if you got a place like your office that takes up say three floors of a high rise and, but now all of a sudden 90% of the staff is working remotely, you don't need the other two floors. Yeah, I and mean, then then what are you gonna do? Who who, do you, who are you gonna rent that to if everybody's now figuring out? Oh, we don't need twenty f- floors in the Empire State Building. We can get by with you know buying people remote access, and you know they can telecommute to work, and you know, I, yeah, I I I can't wait to look back on this, and once we get out of all this, and see where the politics actually fell, where what was right, what was wrong, what you know. What was stupid? Yeah. What was, you know, smart? What, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, by the time this episode releases, uh, it may be <laughs> that time. No, yeah, election <laughs> will have already have happened. and Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I keep thinking, like, okay, it's not ideal. And I, I, I keep thinking, like, well... You know, when I used to, when I used to sit down and watch and watch like World War II movies with my dad, I used to think like, man, I must have really sucked to be like a child growing up in a in your in your village that got blown up by war. You know, what are where where are you living? What are you doing? You're just like living in rubble. <laughs> you know, right? And then here we're we're concerned about, oh my gosh, is my child going to be able to have access to the internet? <laughs> you know, do they have do they have a yeah. tablet or a computer that they can actually get to class with and Who's gonna help them with their homework? Well, that that little kid in that village with that blown up village, you know, living in rubble. The last thing he's thinking about is school. <laughs> but yet right. he probably the, grew up, uh, you know, a long life and had, you know, grandkids and probably owned a business at some point in his life and had a level of success and provided. So he may have. Well, and I that. do. And I I worry about these kids in in poor areas or you know if, if their families just don't have the money for the ipad and or the chromebook or the you know whatever they're sending home with kids i mean you know i, I worry about all of those kids yeah. but then i also sit here and scratch my head it's like okay so some areas are talking about shutting down the school for the first two months or doing this you know dra- draconian just shutting down the whole year but yet they're going to have after you know they'll they're going to have kids in Y care type facilities, you know, the YMCA, a lot of areas, at least in my area, a lot of YMCAs will go, you know, provide a service before and after school. So it's like, okay, so they can't go sit with 24 other kids in a, in a classroom with a desk, but they can go bounce around at a daycare facility, basically. I mean, that, yeah. that to me doesn't make much sense. Either it's all or nothing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Either the kids send our kids to school or, mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't 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 cancel school, but then send them to a white care facility and where they're still bouncing around with their same peers. Yeah, and not learning what they not not in a not in a program that they would have learned in school. I get it. Right, I get it. Yeah, that's what I can't wait to see. Like personally, I think a lot of it's political, but that's yeah. just me. I'm, it. It's it's in there, and I think that that's why, you know, from state to state and city to city, you know, the, that level, the political level, is 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 in, is influencing the decisions of whether to shut down or be relaxed, you know. Right. Whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When they say it's not political, it it's really it's impossible <laughs> to say that. I, mean, I don't know how they say that with a straight face because it's like if Orange Man says hydrochloroquine or whatever, then they're going to go, oh, we can't do that. And that you know, because he said that. They're some governor. They're just making it like illegal to prescribe it. Well, he's, you know, the governor's not a doctor. I mean, maybe that one is. I don't know. But 
by and large, most governors are not doctors. So how, how, how can they say it's illegal to prescribe a medication if a doctor thinks it's the right thing for the patient? It should be up to the doctor, not, not the politician. Yeah, like our food guidelines and all that other stuff, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, man. It's good catching up. And uh, yeah. I, know, I, I know that um, I've done a recurring, um, and I just realized I'm going to be out of town next week, and I'm going to be traveling back on that on next Friday. So this uh, we may not be able to be able to connect again, um, but we'll pick right back up um, the following week. Is that Perfect. okay? To Sounds like playing to me. All right. Till next time. Yeah. Was Lonnie Beecham wanting to tell you to get your life back to normal? That's a wrap. <laughs> So get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It, Restoration. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production.